guys welcome back um, at the start I'd just like to say uh, I'm not going to be putting the script to this video in the description I will be putting the model I used in the description you can use that and edit it however you want but I do I do think you guys should make your own it's fun um, I am sick I don't know if I just said that but um, so I'll be talking kind of low and sniffling a lot uh, this is definitely, this is a re-upload of a older tutorial, so, um, I don't know if this means I'm going back in tutorials, I'm just gonna, I just felt like re-uploading this one, because, I mean, it is useful, I updated it slightly, I, I did not do very much, but I think I will try to do a better job of explaining everything, um, and I will show you how you can get started making attacks like this. So to get started, um, you want to go to replicated storage. You're going to need a remote event. So for the remote event, you just need to go to replicated storage, right click it, hit insert object, and find remote event. You're going to give your remote event a name. So I'm just going to call this ice start. Or actually I'll call ice remote. Like that. And make sure um, it's the you know I'll explain it later and then you're going to need your ice shard so um, I've got this ice shard right here then again it will be in the description um, whenever you're making this yourself just make sure this green arrow here is facing upwards meaning that's that the top surface is um, is facing upwards or else it won't work correctly so if if you don't do that it'll be upside down or it'll be facing to the left and it's just a little bit more difficult to do so once you have your ice shard just drag that into there name it ice, ice shard like that the name you can always change and edit in the script but for now just keep it an ice shard and ice remote i'll explain why in a little bit so um Next up, we gotta get a, go into starter pack and insert a local script. So we have a local script here. You can name that this local script whatever you want. The name of it literally matters zero, other than for you to know what it is. So we'll just name this Ice Spike Remote Fire. It's a long name, but it just lets me know what it is. So um, at the beginning of the script, just always add wait one. I mean, not always, but sometimes just add wait one, just just so everything has time to load up in the game. So, and this is just so I know where everything is. So this will be where all of our services is, and you don't have to type that part. But this part you do have to type. So we have local replicated storage, replicated storage. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get find the replicated storage. So we'll do this game get service replicated storage like that. And what this does is it finds replicated storage and it allows us to refer to it whenever we type out replicated storage. And then we'll also get uh, user input service. So uh, user input service is a thing that allows us to, whenever we, it finds out whenever we press a key and then we can find out which key they pressed. And I'll show you how we put that to use here in a second. So the game, get service, user input service, like that. And that's our services right there. And then we need to get the remote. So we'll do local remote is equal to replicated storage, which we got up here, um, is equal to remote, or is equal to replicated storage, wait for child. And we'll do ice remote. And make sure this name here is exact is exactly the same as your name here. It has to be, it's very case sensitive. So, um, now wait for child why do we do that so let's say the game is loading and it hasn't loaded in this little object here and but the script is already loaded then it tries to find this ice remote but it has not loaded in so what this does it just waits till it can actually find this ice remote thing so like um, here I can give you a demonstration so let's say it's not there so it's got a different name and we hit play and if we wait here a little bit, once it loads, if it'll load, there we go. If we wait a little bit, it'll give us an error, or not an error, it'll give us a thing like this. So it says, if you ever get an error like this, wait for child, blah, 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 that means it can't find the object you're trying to 
refer to. So we're not we don't want that, so we're just gonna keep it as ice remote. Okay, so now we've got the remote, we need to get the player. So we do local player is equal to so player is just a name, you can change that how you want. I wouldn't though, just for now. Game not players until you understand it correctly. Get dot local player. So let's get you can only do this inside local scripts because um, what this does is it finds the player that has the script because it's local, it's in their inventory. You could say, um, yeah, but just remember you can only do this inside local scripts, you cannot do this inside regular scripts. Then next up, we have to do we have to get the character as well. So the local character is equal to player dot character, and this just gets the character from the player. And then we have to get the mouse. So we do local mouse is equal to player. Oops, see, that's the right game storage. Player get mouse. Actually, I guess we don't need get mouse. Sorry, delete that line, guys. We do not need mouse because we're just using keys. We're not using. We don't need the position of the mouse. So we got that. Then uh, we're gonna make a whole nother here. Let's let's. We're just keeping it organized. So we're gonna name our stuff. So we'll just name this little area uh, variables. Now this, when, whenever you do two dashes, that makes it to where you can type whatever you want, and it literally does nothing, and it's just meant for the person reading it. And then here we'll just do settings. And then again, sorry guys, I'm, I'm extremely sick right now. I'm not extremely sick, I just am sick. So I sound weird. So, and then we'll do local debound. Or, uh, no, so to make it simpler for you guys, we'll do local cooldown. Because the people, they use debounce, but I, I don't know why they, I don't know what debounce means. So we have debounce, and we'll keep that as true. And we'll do local key. So this is the key that you want to be pre. Oh shit, we won't, oh sorry, bad word. Uh... This is the key you want to be, the, sorry guys, I am like dead today. So this is the key that um, you want to be pressed to make the move happen. So whenever I press Z, the move will actually happen. <laughs> sorry, I don't know how to explain it better than that. You know what I mean though, or at least I hope you do. So we have user, so now we're gonna get the user input service. So we get user input service, so whenever the input is began, whenever the person actually presses a key, It'll connect. It'll do a function, which we're about to type out. So we need the input. So whichever key they actually pressed at that time, and we need to make sure we. Uh, the second thing is if they're actually typing. So this checks if. So this gets the key. So the first thing here is um, which key they're pressing. So let's say I press F. It'll input will be F. And is typing is whether or not they're actually typing in the chat we need that to make sure it doesn't activate a move while they're typing so if is so we gotta get if if is typing so if they are typing then return end meaning it stops everything inside here and just stops oh if return end there we go there we and then we'll do local uh, key press so this will be the key that they're pressing is equal to input dot key code so it's the key letter that they actually pressed and if we do if key pressed is equal to enum or whoops two equal signs to make sure it's equal to enum dot key code and then we'll do our key variable up here so key and then we also do that and cool down and character then. so whoopsie that's care so um, what this line here does this one this little spot here checks if the key they pressed is equal to this this one checks if cooldown is equal to true and this one actually checks if the character is existing currently so let's say the character gets deleted and they press the key then um, it won't do this move because the character does not exist and it won't cause an error so now we got to do uh, cooldown is equal to false so now if they press it twice in a row It'll become false and it only activates once. So down here, we'll do this. We'll do wait and then the cooldown. This is put your cooldown here. So whatever, how long you want the cooldown to be, put it here. I'll do eight, eight seconds. So they can use the move every eight seconds. We'll do debounce. 
I'm sorry, not the amount. Sorry, guys. A uh, cooldown is equal to true after that. And that's the basic script. So we're almost done here. Now we just need to get the remote and fire it. So fire server. So this sends a signal to the server through this remote we created here. And um, it'll activate the script inside the server ser service thing. And that because we're doing it inside service script service, it allows everybody to see it. Now if we did the effects inside starter pack or in a local script, it would not be visible to other players. Now that can be helpful if you're trying to make something like a uh, something that changes the graphics only for one player. So like let's say I have a script inside starter pack that makes um, the base plate neon. Um, only that one player can see it. But we're not doing that, so you don't need to worry about that. So now we're done with that script. We need to go to service script service. And we'll go here, we'll insert an object, we'll insert a script. You can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to name this ice attack like that. And if you want, you can put in a folder just to keep it neat. You know, just name this. Sorry, open up. Ice magic. Like that. And, you know, just keeps it neat. So, like, let's say we also have fire magic inside here. Like, uh, then we can just put all of our fire magic scripts inside here. You know, maybe that's for a future tutorial. But no, I don't think we're going to need that. So we just delete that. You can get rid of the print hello world. All right, so um, we need to get the rep storage. So the replicated storage. Um, we're going to change the name. So we'll do local, or no, sorry, not. We'll do local replicated storage is equal to game wait for child replicated storage. And then we'll also do this. So local remote is equal to replicated storage, wait for child, ice start. So um, then again, we get the replicated storage, and then we also get the remote from replicated storage. Okay. Sorry, I'm just sniffling a lot. All right, and then now we'll do remote dot on server event. So whenever the remote is fired, like we did in the local script, connect. And guys, remember when you're typing this stuff out, it has to be very cap sensitive or else it will not work. Player. And that'll be the player that actually fired the remote. So that's that right there. Alright, so now we have to get character again. So we'll do local character is equal to player.character. Um, and yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so now we need to make a folder that holds all of our debris or items, everything that we create here in this script. So we'll do local folder is equal to workspace, find first child, debris, debris folder, so debris folder, or instance dot, oh sorry, dot new folder. Now, so what this does is, um, if it finds a folder named debris, or if it finds something in workspace named debris folder, then it'll, or no, so folder is, god, this is very difficult to explain, um, so if it finds something in debris folder, it'll be the thing that it finds, or it'll, if it doesn't find anything in debris folder, folder will equal, or folder will be, um, it creating a new folder. And then here we're just going to name the folder debris folder. Folder name is equal to debris folder. This is just a folder that um, will hold any items that we create. So I explained that earlier, but I just wanted to get that point across just in case you were confused after me giving you that horrible explanation of what this actually does. So um, now, so we don't want the player to be moving while. Um, while doing this move so we want him to stay still while the ice is coming out but then he can move after the ice is spawned so we'll do we'll create a body velocity to keep him still so we'll do local oops that's smoke okay, so local position is equal to instance dot new body velocity comma character dot oh wait right sorry guys um keep that but we have to go up and below character we'll create a new variable 
call it root part and we'll just call this and we'll do this so do character wait for child humanoid root part sorry if my keys are loud by the way but you know and then um here we'll just do comma comma root comma root part now so this will um create a new body velocity inside the root part so it's parented to the root part and if you don't know what parented means parented means whatever its parent is so sorry it's a terrible explanation so the parent of this script here is starter pack and then if i insert a part into it so let's just insert or let's insert a another script the parent of the script is actually ice spikes remote fire script so you can also it says the parent here so it's starter pack um now so we gotta do position dot max force is equal to vector three dot new math dot huge do i need those i don't know math dot huge so this will just create a very large value just so we can't move And I don't know if, hold on, let me run it real quick. I don't know if I'm supposed to have goals there. <laughs> it's always good to test your script in a way. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any errors. Oh, wait, there is an error. Um, replicated storage. Oh, right, so it's not, sorry, guys. In the remote, I said I start. It's actually I s remote. My bad. Change that. Let's try this one more time. This is why we always test it. While, while making the script. So we use it, huge, a number value, whatever. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm, math.huge creates a large value. I'm not gonna go through the pain to research it in a tutorial. We'll just insert a large value. <laughs> it really doesn't matter too much. This looks cooler anyways. All right, so we'll do position.p is equal to 300. So that's the power of the velocity. Then we do position dot velocity, so that's the actual velocity itself, which direction it's moving, and how fast. So we'll do uh, character dot. Oh no, actually we got root part. So we'll do root part dot c frame. So we get the position and rotation value, and then we get the look vector. So the direction that's actually facing the look vector of the c frame is the direction the part is facing, which is why the um, direction the ice model we're using is also important so we times that by 0.1 so we don't want him to move at all we just want him to stay still so we make it at a very low value to where he's just barely moving and then we do game dot debris dot or add item and we'll add the position thing too so what this does is it adds the item to a, a debris thing so after two seconds, this item will be destroyed, and it doesn't. It'll continue on with the script as it's destroying it. So whenever we use it, now watch. We'll just go here. I hit Z. I can't move, and then it gets destroyed, and I can move. That simple. Now we have to make some variables for the ice. So we'll do local value is equal to negative four. Local size z is equal to 3 and local size x is equal to 10 so and also local side value 0.5 so these are so val so we have size x which is the size or size c sorry which is the size of it um di not diagonal i don't know it's the size of it the base of it then this is the height of it so size x is the height i know it's x and z it's kind of confusing um, and then we have side, the side valve is how much it moves left and right. So, so it's going to go out at an angle like, here I'll show you. Just open up snipping tool. And just do this. So the ice spikes, so let's just say we have our player right here, right? And then we have, um, the ice. The ice is going to go out like this, in, in a direction like this, onto the ground. So that's how it'll be. If you get what I mean. The side valve just moves it left and right like that. No, don't change the script. Let's change these. Okay, so now we have to make the function for ice. We have local function ice. Like that. So we'll 
now we have to create a variable called extra so we'll do local extra uh, this is just a thing that makes it a little random like it looks it makes it more natural so we'll just do negative 11 comma 11 and then we'll divide that by 10 so this gets a value between 11 negative 11 and 11 and then divides it by 10 so extra will be a value between negative 1.1 and 1.1 so it'll be it could be one point or it could be um, 0.8 or it could be 0.4 it could be negative 0.6 so it could be anything in between there just to make it look a little bit more random and neat not neat not neat actually the opposite of neat which is what we want and then we have to do the shards so we'll do local shards equal to not so it's equal to game oh sorry that's capital game dot replicated storage dot or uh, wait so we we have a replicated storage thing we'll do replicated storage wait for child ice shard right that's what we named it ice shard and clone we clone that to where it duplicates it so whenever we change its position and set its parent to something else it we have an extra one there so we can always use it again all right, and then we have um, our side value. So local side will be math dot random, and we'll do um, negative side val comma side val, which we'll just get a value with side val. So it'll be anything from left to right. So anything from negative point five to point five any whole value okay and then we have to do um, up is equal to shard dot size so we'll change the up value how big it is shard dot size dot y divided by 2 so how much this will later be how much it moves up it um, from the root part so it'll you um, I'll explain it a bit more in depth when I'm actually setting the C frame of the the shard and then we have local rotate, which is how much it's going to be rotating on its y-axis, I think, no, z-axis. So it's just how much it spins around, so it's not all, like, exactly the same. So we'll do math.random 0, 180, so it could be anything from 0 to 180, <laughs> the degree that it rotates at. Then we'll create a variable called mro. I'll explain what this does after I finish, you know, actually setting it up sorry not no, sorry uh, we'll do 99 comma 100 and this is just to get more of the random factor and then we'll do if m r o is equal to equal to 99 okay. and then we'll have an else here as well just like that I should not put that there. and on this first one we'll do We'll do this. We'll have local s. No, so we'll do local s r o. Yeah, that's what we'll name it. Is equal to math dot random eight comma ten divided by ten, and then we'll do u r o is equal to m r o plus s r o. Actually, so I don't think we do need this. No, we do. Okay, and then we'll do this. So we'll do local s r o on under the else is equal to math dot ram. I'm oh, sorry, math dot random one comma three divided by ten, and then we'll do u r o is equal to m r o plus s r o. Whoopsie! I made that capital, didn't I? Whoops, that's it. There we go. Like that. So, first two letters are capital, second. Last one is not capital. Got that? Alright. Now, um, we'll do this. So, we have to set the shard size. So, we do shard dot size is equal to vector3, vector3 dot new. And we'll do size z comma size x 
on the size Z. I know size Z isn't on the Z axis, but that's just what I named it at the time. So we have shard dot C frame. Now it's set to C frame, which is basically the position and the rotation of the part. So where it's going to be inside the workspace where you actually see it located. So do shard dot C frame is equal to character. No, so we'll do human and group part instead. So do root part dot C frame times C frame. Oh, sorry, that's not times times C frame dot new side comma negative up comma val plus extra now we have so up negative up is how much it's going to move up then we val plus extra is just where it's going to be positioned uh, forward and that little extra just to move it back and forth and then we have shard dot parent is the folder so that's where it's going to be parented to our debris folder and then we'll do so we can actually see it inside the workspace so then we have shard dot c frame again we're going to set the c frame so we can actually like this is where we're going to do all the rotations now so we'll do shard at c frame is equal to shard dot c frame times c frame dot from euler angles xyz so this is how we're going to actually rotate it so c frame dot from euler angles is just c frame dot angles and this is what you use to rotate stuff based off C-frame. You can also set the rotation by shard rotation, but this allows us to set it based off the direction the character is actually facing. So we'll do, or based off, and also based off where the shard is actually placed already. So we'll do side, comma, negative, up, comma, val plus extra. Then we'll do shard dot parent is equal to folder. And if you guys aren't understanding this, that that's okay. Oh, sorry, we're not setting the parent again. Um, yeah, uh, everyone starts somewhere, and maybe you have to move down in a video, but I get uh, you may not understand this now. I would not have understand it, understood it if I was... if <laughs> Hell, whenever I made this, I wouldn't have understood the video of me making this so don't 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 feel down if you don't understand it it's, it's very confusing at first and once you grasp it you will understand it a bit better so let's continue now so we've got the position everything set but now they will all be the same size and nothing will change so it'll all be in that same little area so we have to do this val is equal to val minus two and then we'll do size z sorry so z is equal to size z plus one so this keeps adding value to it so size x is equal to size x plus one and side val is equal to side val plus 0.5 and then we have to add the the shard itself to the debris folder so it gets destroyed later game dot debris add item sorry add item shard comma five now we're going to run it just to make sure there's no errors because it doesn't sometimes it doesn't display the errors and I don't see any oh sorry I have to actually I just realized something I have to actually hit Z to see if there's errors and I don't think there are any errors let me make sure, hold on. So it doesn't make me move, and it doesn't look like there are any errors. Not currently, at least, sorry. Um, we've got that then. So now we need to make the thing that actually spawns the ice. So this does spawn the ice, but it, it doesn't do anything right now because it doesn't have something to call the function. So it actually, something that actually does the function. Oh, hell, sorry, guys. Um, we almost forgot something kind of important. We almost forgot the thing that actually moves the ice and makes it move. So this will be the effect of it moving. So this sets the position, the general position. And then what I'm going to be going to do here is going to move it to make it look like it's moving ice. So do function, spawn function. And you may not, oh shoot. Um, let's do that. So what this does is it makes a function. Um, it'll do everything in here, and it'll also continue on with the script. So let's say I had a wait out here, 
like wait five it'll do all this wait five seconds and then it'll do this stuff but then if i have a have this here and i do wait five five um it'll get to here and it'll wait five seconds as well and also continue doing this while it's waiting five seconds but we need this down here so we'll just move it down here so inside this we're going to create a tween so we'll have to wait 0.5 just to give it a little bit before it comes out of the ground the ice you know so the local tween service is equal to game get service tween service then we'll do local tween inform so it's all the tween information is equal to tween info oh, sorry not tween service tween info dot new and we'll just now this is where we're going to put all the info so do point three is how long it or is the speed no sorry not the speed how long it t takes to complete the tween so how long it takes to move and change the properties that we're going to add on later then we'll do enum dot using style dot linear so it's just there's different uh uh easing styles so like you could do bounce and when it, and it'll be like as if it was bouncing um i can show you guys after if you want me to um but we'll get back to that later so enum dot easing direction dot out and then we have we'll just put in zero here and false we don't want it to loop and then we'll put in zero here so this is how many times it would loop and this is if it actually loops and we don't want that stuff for this so you can ignore that for now you can always look up videos on tweening because there are some in-depth videos on how to tween tweening is a very useful tool but sometimes i i would suggest sometimes using um loops to move to do c-frame manipulation but we're using tween service for the sake of simplicity so so properties is equal to this is what we're going to put this is where we're putting everything that is actually going to be changed so we'll do c frame is equal to char dot c frame times oops, times c frame dot new zero comma up comma or no not comma times 1.5 comma zero so that'll be where the that's the new c frame of the shard and where it's going to move it so we'll do now this we'll do local tween is equal to tween service create a shard comma tween inform comma properties okay we have the tween established now all we have to do is tween and play that's all good so now we have the actual movement of the shard so next up underneath this end here so not this end but the end after we will put this so uh, four i is equal to one comma fifty do so it'll do whatever is inside here fifty times now you can change how many ice spikes you want you can change it to one hundred or forty and i'll show you what it looks like whenever i change it later so we do ice and so it all doesn't come out at once unless you want it to you can do wait so where it's a little um it's got i'll show you so we have wait right now and then i'll remove it later just to show you what happens when I remove it, and I'll change the value for i. That is not right, is it, huh? <laughs> well, that's okay, guys. So let's take a look. So it looks like it, the tweening is okay, but it looks like whenever it actually places it, it's wrong. So that's fine. We go back to the script. We always have errors, okay? There's never going to be a time where you do not have errors actually that's not true sometimes you get lucky and you don't have errors but we do have errors now and we are going to fix them so let's take a look back at our stuff so we'll start off from the, stop, uh, the top and um, we just have to look through it so negative 4 that's right 3 10.5 it won't be this by the way um, negative 11 comma 11 up dot char dot size negative side val and side val game not replicated storage ice shard clone yep rotate is 0 comma 180 mro is 99 comma 100 sro is 8 comma 10 divided by 10 uro is 8 comma mro 1 comma 3 divided by 10 um size z 
size x and size z, that's right. Side negative up comma val plus extra, that looks right. So I think it's the rotation that has to be wrong. Yes, sir, it is the rotation. So <laughs> you can see I put this here, like I, I put the same thing I put here, that is wrong. This is completely wrong. I don't know what I was doing. Okay, this will be URL, comma, rotate, comma, 0.4. So go to your line that sets this C-frame a second time and change those values out with this here. Okay, I did that wrong. That's my mistake. It's okay, everybody makes mistakes, but a good thing we found it fast with the issue. And you see, we have the general effect now. So it spawns out. It does not do damage at the moment because we have not added a script that does damage, but it spawns and it does the spikes and then it'll, you know, delete. So now let's mess with these values here. So let's say I go here and I remove this weight. So we just bam. No more weight. So that's, we cross that weight out. We do this and it all spawns at once like that. If you want it like that, sure, you can do that, but it looks nicer without it. Now we can also change this value here so we can do 100. And you'll see what happens once I do 100. It's pretty crazy. No. All right, so uh, we do that, and there's way more spikes. It's way larger. And, yep. And if we want to go crazy, you can do, like... You can also do this. So we'll do... You can also do 25 and have die spawn twice every time it does this thing. So it'll be the same amount of ice spikes, but it'll be, you know, half the time, so it'll be like that. I think I kind of like that better, so I think I will keep it like that. So it deletes, and then we wait for the cooldown, and it spawns like that. <laughs> Looks pretty good. And I think I'm going to try making this neon glass eye, so I'll do... We'll do neon. Here we go. Let's, let's just see what it looks like. Um after I will add maybe some effects, I don't know. Neon's a little too bright. I'll just make it, you know, a little like 0.6 or 0.4. Sorry, I'm just messing with effects right now. You can mess with this however you want. I'll probably put it in there as neon. Never mind, guys. Sorry, we're just gonna keep it as it was. So glass and 0.2. We've got that. Everything is good. So now we need damage. So we don't have the actual damage thing yet. So inside your service script service, we'll go here. And inside ice attack, insert a local script. Make sure, wait, no, not a local script. A regular script. Not a local script, sorry. Just a regular script. And we'll just name this damage. And inside that, uh, so we're going to insert um, two things. So we're going to insert a string value called player so we'll just in so go to the insert and just find a string value where is string value sorry i'm looking for a string i can't find it ray um string here we go and we'll just name this player then we have a we need to insert a number value so a number value or an int I think we are going to use a number value though. So we'll just name this damage. This is taken. This is how much damage it will actually do each spike. So we'll do 10. You can change that however you want. Okay, so inside this damage script here, we're going to do um, this script. Oh, oh, also, so go to the damage script and just make sure that's disabled. The damage script. We don't want it enabled till it goes and parents it inside the other thing. So the script.parent. Touched. Uh, connect. Sorry, guys. <laughs> connect function. So whenever the part, the parent of the script is touched, which will later be the ice shard, it'll um, do whatever is inside here. So we have to go here. We have to do hit. So this is hit is the part it touched. That's the first value inside this function. Is whatever it's being is whatever it touched it. So if hit dot hit dot parent find first child humanoid. So if it finds a humanoid and it then it is not equal to no, meaning it does exist. And hit dot parent then. So if it has a parent, not or space or whatever. 
we'll do this. So if hit hit dot parent dot name is equal equal to script dot player dot value. So if it's equal to this player value that we're going to change in the other script. Or hit dot parent dot parent dot name is equal equal to script dot parent dot or script dot player dot value then return end so if if um, the parent of the part it hits so if the character that it hits if the character's name that it hits is equal to this player so if it's going to be equal to that name it will not actually do damage to them because let's say it hits the person that actually used the effect we do not want it to do damage to them so we will add that in in a second so after it does that, we'll do script dot disabled equal to true. So we don't want this to hit multiple times for one thing, which just disabling it causes the script to not work anymore. Then we'll do hit dot parent dot humanoid take damage script dot damage taken dot value. So that'll damage the player however much we have here. So that is that should work that's the damage or sorry we have to go back into here now and um yeah so we have to go scroll up scroll to the top up here and we'll just do this so we'll do script dot damage dot uh player dot value is equal to player dot name and then we'll also scroll down to let's go to under under URO see wherever actually no we'll just do it right underneath here so uh, no actually we'll do it right above MRO so right here above local MRO is blah 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 uh, we do this so we do local damage is equal to script dot damage clone and then we'll do this we'll do local Sorry, not local. We'll do damage dot parent. So it sets the parent is equal to shard, and damage dot disabled is equal to false. So it makes the script active now. And uh, we'll go back to the. So first off, let's test it to make sure it does damage. Oh wait, sorry guys, I need to add a. Um, so I'm going to use the rig builder plugin to add a character. Here, where did he go? I just added him. Oh, here he is. And let's. Uh, he may. It's not going to do damage right now because it's root part is anchored so it goes into his root part humanoid root part and make sure it's can collide false or yeah false and anchored false so we can actually be moved around inside the game now once we go in hopefully we'll see if it works and it looks like it hold on move ice i can't see if it damaged him it does damage him see that's a little plain so we're gonna add just a basic hit effect So we'll just do um, local bolt is equal to instance. And if you don't want any hit effects, just less lag. You don't have to do this part. Um, you can be done now if you want part. And we'll just, oh shoot, sorry guys. So um, we're going to create a debris folder like we did before. So we'll just do, I'm just going to paste it so I don't have to. You can go back and copy and paste it from the other thing too. I just don't want to make it again because it's just you know pointless. So we already did this. So now we're going to make a function. So local function effect. We'll do this local bolt is equal to instance dot new and it'll create a new part. And the parts parent will be inside folder. And then we'll do bolt dot name is equal to effect bolt dot brick color is equal to brick color dot new maroon. So we're making like a blood effect, I guess you could say. So like you get stabbed. And then we'll do bolt bolt dot. This is just setting all the material and color of the brick that we're going to make. It's equal to neon. Dot trans sorry, not reflected, so you, dot transparency is equal to zero. The bolt dot size is equal to vector three dot new. Um, zero point one comma zero point one comma zero point one. 
and then we'll do bolt dot pan collide is equal to false bolt dot anchored is equal to false so we don't want it to be anchored sorry this is a lot for this one thing bolt dot c frame i'm kind of going through it i'm not really explaining it sorry dot c frame is equal to hit dot c frame so whatever it hits oh cool now we have to create a movement so body velocity movement go to instance dot new body velocity comma bolt movement dot velocity is equal to vector three dot new sorry delay math dot random by the way if you ever have this thing here uh, where it's got like whenever you type it deletes the message hit the INS button on your keyboard and that will stop math dot random and it's doing it again negative 30 comma 30 and we can just copy and paste that three times make sure there's a comma in between them here and then close it off with another close parenthesis and we'll do movement dot p is equal to uh, math dot random sorry for all the sniffling again I know I've apologized for it like three times but oh well what can you do game dot debris add item and we'll just add this bolt and delete it in a second <laughs> we'll do what we did before with before i is equal to one comma ten do and we'll do effect and what, where is the size? So we have the size here. I'm just going to increase that size a bit to 0.2 just to make it a bit thicker so you can see it. And let's hit play and let's go look at the effect. I'll show you what it looks like. What this does is it creates a part and then it just sends it in a bunch of random directions like blood. See? Like that. And, it, and it's a nice little effect. It's pretty simple. It looks cooler when it's smaller, I think. Maybe I'll change it back, but it's just a little bit more visible on video. But it, you know, it gives him the, it gives you the effect that he's being stabbed. All right, <laughs> so we've got that. That is all done. That is your ice attack. If it works, good for you. If it does not work, you can message me and we can figure out what is wrong, what you've typed out wrong, and feel free to look at the video again if it's not working. And um, remember, the ice shard will be in the description. I I suggest that you remake one yourself. Just make sure the top faces upwards i just made it in studio with unions make sure it's all one part ice shard cannot be a model it has to be a part or a mesh part okay it cannot be a model you cannot set the c-frame of a model without different methods just remember that um i'm not putting the script in the description because you don't learn that way you just copy and paste that way um is that it i think that's it Thank you for watching, and yes, I know this is an older video that I'm re-uploading, and I'm just redoing it correctly, um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed, thank you.